waiting for that to start. Let's see. Let me stop the transcription. Right. Okay, the lecture is being recorded from now, from now onwards. Uh, okay, let's proceed. So, in Monday's lecture, I went through the method and explained to you, uh, in essence, how we derived that uh, the, the the correction factor that we need to calculate. Right, uh, and that's the equation uh, that we you see the. Uh, uh, at the bottom in purple, uh, the, the two equations, actually the, 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 the middle one. So for, for the Hazen-William uh, equation, uh, let me just get my pen out, uh, that's the equation uh, that we use, and that's the equation that we'll be using uh, in the tutorial, right? Because we'll be using the Hazen-William method. If you're using the darcy weisbach method, then it's just the power uh, for the Q value. Uh, so because the equations are different, they have different powers, so then the value of the power will change each time. So uh, you'll see that 1.85 will become 2 uh, because in the darcy weisbach equation, the Q is raised to the power 2 and not 1 to the power 85. Right? Uh, in the actual equation, uh, the original, if, when we derive that, uh, you'll see that uh, the, on the top of the screen, that on the top of the page there that you see now, uh, the one that's uh, highlighted in a light brown, uh, you see it's got the N value over there. Uh, you'll also note it has a negative sign. Uh, let, uh, just make, make a mental note of that, that you see uh, in that equation you have a negative sign. So let's move on with the example. Uh, let me just clear out the clutter there. Uh, uh, this, this is the example that you have in your notes, and then I'll give you another tutorial example also at the end of it, uh, just to ex help you understand the whole procedure. So. Uh, we need to solve the following pipe network using the uh, Hazen-William method, and we're given uh, in this particular example the value of CH. Now, CH is your Hazen-William constant. Uh, if you recall, uh, you go back to those uh, notes uh, in the first lecture, uh, you had the table there uh, that was there in the table, and you had at table 4.2, you pick up uh, all the C values from there. So in this example, they're not telling us what's the type of pipe we're using, but we've just been given uh, the C value, and you can see it's uh, obviously a cast iron pipe, an old cast iron pipe. Uh, it's been designed for when it's old. Uh, you know, uh, it'll be new for a while, but we expect these pipes to have a long lifespan, uh, 40, 50 years so at least. So uh, that's why it's been designed for uh, uh, when it's old. Right? So the C value has been checked when it's old. When it's new, obviously, it's nice and clean, so the water flows uh, much you get better flow in the pipe, but as you get per, per, per build up uh, in, in the pipe, then you'll, it'll slow the flow down. The, the friction will increase in the pipe. Uh, okay, that's just by the way. Uh, let me come back to that example. Right, so uh, we're given these uh, values over here uh, in this particular diagram. Uh, The, the the first now uh, remember there were two things uh, to, uh, in the Hazi, in the, the in in the Hardy cost method when we went through it. Uh, let me just go back to that uh, if you recall in the calculations. And I told you there were two things. The first was uh, you, two things you got to worry about. Let me just clear the clutter from the lecture that we had last time. Uh, is these two uh, five and six? Sorry, is it a query? Is it a question? You got this uh, five and six uh, that needs to be satisfied. That's what those equations are going to do. Now, in the first uh, sketch that we, we, we're doing, or that you, you see there, uh, we're taking care of this number five over here. Where at any node, right, at any node, uh, the flow into the node must equal to the flow out of the node. And so that's what we're looking at in that first part of this. So for any uh, problem that we need to do, uh, we need to look at that. Uh, the, the flow into the node must equal to the flow out of the node. Uh, we have 63 liters. In, in this particular question, uh, we have, uh, uh, if, if, we, if we had to number these nodes, for example, and uh, let's call that node A, uh, let's call that node B, Let's call that node C. Uh, let's call it node E. Like that. Right, so we have uh, four nodes in this particular question. Uh, 
Now at node A, we have 63. We're given that value of 63 liters per second are flowing into the node. Right, uh, 63 liters per second flowing into the node. And you then got to guess a value. Right? Uh, and, and you're also given 25.2 uh, uh, liters per second being drawn out of E, node E, and 37.8 uh, liters per second being drawn out of node C. Uh, this all in a minute, please. Uh, excuse me for that. Right. So the, the, that's the given information that you'd have what's in red over there, those arrows. So at node A, uh, you, you, you're supplying uh, 63 liters per second into your network. Uh, and at node E, you're withdrawing 25.2 liters per second. And at node C, you're extracting, uh, you're drawing out 37.8 liters per second. So now you, uh, the, the, the Q in was equal to Q out. So you'll start off with node A. Uh, you'll start off with node A like that, so you'll draw node A. Uh, this us draw that down, node A. Uh, and then you're going to input uh, 63, so you're going to draw 63. Now, it's the, the diagram looks simple here because it's already done for you. Okay. So you got 63 liters per second. Then you you have to guess the value of what's being withdrawn from that uh, and in pipeline AB. So uh, you draw pipeline AB like that and you draw a pipeline AE over there. So you're going to guess one value, and what they've guessed over here, so in this particular one, uh, we guessed the value of 24 for pipeline AB. Right, so maybe if I put it in a different uh, color, then it'll stress the point that that's uh, just a guessed value. Uh, you don't have to have any particular experience with this. Uh, you can just, if you decide you want to share it evenly between those two pipes, you can do it. But as you do the iterations, it will correct itself as you go through the iterations. Right? So we guess a value of 24 there. That's all. That's the first thing you will do. So that's what's happened in this diagram. But once you've guessed for uh, to, uh, in that pipeline AB a value of 24, you then uh, uh, the, the, the Q in at node A must equal to the Q out of node A. It then means that the flow in pipeline AE has to equal to 63 minus 24. 63 minus 24. That, so that, it has to equal that. You've got no choice in that matter because for node A, you've got to satisfy that uh, 0.5 or that equation of Q in equals to Q out. So 63 minus 24. Uh, will equal to 39. Uh, so that's how we arrived at that value of uh, of 39 at node A. Right, so so then we, we've so we've done that. We guessed the value for uh, flow in pipe AB, and from that we're then able to deduce what if pipe AB is 24, and then it means that pipe AE will have to be <clears throat> 39 liters per second. Right. Uh, we then uh, you, you, you're then given, for example, uh, the, the the flow uh, uh, at, at pipeline in pipeline E, like that. Right? So you, you're given the, the so the the, the 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 flow that's being withdrawn at node E, and you're given the flow that's uh, what being withdrawn at node C. So you can then, uh, if you come to uh, a node B, you'll notice that. Uh, you you know now one of the flows. You know that the, what the, the, the flow of 24 liters per second arriving at B, but you don't. You've got two other pipes, and you don't really know what to do over there. Right? What's going to be happening over there? And what flow will occur in, in those particular two pipes? Uh, you can then move down to node E. Uh, if you then if you then isolated node E, and we know that we would draw we're drawing out uh, from node E. Uh, we're drawing out, uh, let's say. Uh, 25.2 liters per second. Right? So 25.2. Now the this is node E. Let me select the node E. That's our node E. Uh, we also know from uh, from our node A when we isolated node A, we know that 39 liters per second arrives at E. Right? The 39 liters per second arrives uh, at uh, at E. Uh, that we derived when we isolated node A. So we now know that we have 39 uh, coming in uh, at that point. So we have 39 coming in. And then we have two other pipes uh, uh, over there. So we have uh, two pipes. So we have one pipe leaving, one pipe 
uh, I, I don't want to put the direction first. Uh, let me just leave it there. We have the pipeline EC, and then we have the pipeline BE, both of which we don't actually know the flow in those particular pipes. <laughs> uh, let's assume for now uh, that uh, let, let's assume for now that uh, we have uh, 25.2 liters per second. So this value again uh, in pipeline five, this is a guessed value. So the ones I'm circling, these are values that we guessed. So we guessed the 24. We guessed at the 24 there, and we're now going to guess in pipeline EC uh, because we've got two pipes, so we have to just guess one value. So we'll guess that the flow here is 25.2 liters per second. So we, this is just a purely guessed value. You can guess whatever you want. If you want to decide to use 20, you can use, but then uh, you got to adjust the value after that. So uh, when I say adjust the value, you'll, uh, the, your flow in pipeline BE will be accordingly to that over there. So now we have to worry about the flow in pipeline uh, E, uh, so pipeline EB. Uh, so this one we said 25.02. Uh, you can see the arrow that we've put 25.02, uh, it's flowing away. I know I've colored it up in red. Uh, it may not be so visible, but it's flowing out of that node over there. That's what we're guessing. It's flowing out of that node. So 25.2. So in pipeline AC, now we'll now say, well, at node E, the flow into the node must equal to the flow out of the node. So it means that we then bound by, uh, for pipeline BE, uh, that number would have to be uh, the flow in must equal to the flow out over there. So uh, if we say that uh, 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 we have 39, we can see we have 39 uh, liters per second flowing in. Right. Uh, 39 liters per uh, second flowing in, and then we have 25.2 flowing out and 25.2 flowing out. So already we can see that the outflow is more, 25.2 uh, plus 25.2, so that's 50.4, uh, that's flowing out from node E. So it's more than the 39, so we know definitely in pipeline B, it will be flowing inwards. That's it will be flowing inwards. So then we can say that, okay, if that's flowing inwards, it then means that uh, that pipeline E would equal to the 25.2. Uh, uh, let me just write it down. Just, you just have to bear with me. I'm writing with a mouse here. 25.2. Uh, Sorry. Uh, plus uh, 25.2. This is what's flowing out. Right? 25.2. Uh, that's what's flowing out. And then uh, we'll have to minus the 39 from there. Right? So minus 39. On that amount, that's so. 20, this is the 50, the 50.4, and then we're minusing the 39. So, and that would equal to, if you uh, do the sums of that, you then get a value of 11.4. Right, so that's how that 11.4 has been derived at this in this pipeline BE. Right. So uh, let me just clear the clutter again. So uh, let's just. Uh, see what uh, summarize on this diagram what we've done so far right so uh, let me get a different pen uh, let me use for example this time maybe uh, okay let's use that audience value so we know now uh, we we guessed the value of 24 right so let's use the uh, that audience for our guest values so and we guessed that value of 25.2 uh, at pipeline EC. Those were the two guessed values. Then we uh, calculated certain values uh, based on the guessed value. We can, we, we've now calculated that 39. Uh, we've calculated this 11.4. Right, we've done that. So, uh, so far, so good. We now can read, uh, come to node B. We can uh, at node B because now we only have one unknown at node B. Right, so we can then isolate node B. Uh, I'm not going to uh, delete what I've drawn at node A because we've already done with it. I just, I'm just trying to make space. I don't want to go to a blank page because uh, then you won't see this picture here. Right, so let's uh, proceed with that. Uh, let's uh, uh, identify node B or isolate node B. So we will then isolate node B like that. That's so why I'm going to draw node B. Right? And all this, I'm just using the principle of what flows into the node must flow out of the node. So uh, that's node B. At node B, uh, I look at my diagram. I see, okay, I have 24 liters per second arriving at node B uh, from pipeline uh, AB. 
Uh, and then also I've just calculated from node E that I have 11.4 leaving. And so I have uh, 11.4 liters per second leaving node B. And then I have pipeline BC. B, I have pipeline BC and I want the value for pipeline BC. So just looking at this, uh, 24 is coming into the node. Only 11.4 is leaving in B, so it has to be leaving. In uh, so B, C uh, has to be leaving from node A, so that's why I can draw my arrow. And the value there will simply be 24 minus the 11.4. That's so 24 uh, minus the 11.4, like that. And that would equal to, uh, if you got, you can see the 12.6. 12.6, excuse my writing. Right, so that's how we derived that value of 12.6. So we now that we've done node A, we've done node uh, E, we've done node B. Uh, we then got to check node C. We haven't yet uh, done node C. Uh, uh, so let's uh, isolate node C and let's have a look and see what's happening at node C. So we then draw node C. Uh, that will be our node C there. Uh, node C, so, so just bear with me with the mouse here like this. So that's our node C. Uh, based on what the, 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 what we've done already, we now uh, for node B, for, for when we isolated node B, we have calculated uh, that uh, pipeline, the flow in pipeline BC, uh, and we know the direction of it also so as 12.6. So when we isolate node C, we see we have 12.6 uh, arriving there. Uh, 12.6 arriving like that, and we also know we have 25.2 arriving at that node. That right. we've done the calculations, and uh, we that's what we came up with 25.2 arriving. And we know we're drawing out 37.8, right? So we're drawing out uh, 30, uh, 37.8. We're drawing out now. We got to check that actually, wait, is it is it correct? Uh, um, is the amount flowing into node C equal to the amount that's uh, flowing out of node C? So we see if we have 37.8, so we will then, it means that the amount flowing in must add up to that. So we will then check that, okay, 12 plus 6, 12.6 uh, uh, plus 25.7, uh, excuse my writing there, plus 25.7. Uh, what does that equal to? Take out your calculator and do a check, uh, and you'll see that. Uh, immediately you'll get a value of uh, so so not 25.7, 25.2. Uh, my apologies for that. It's 25.2. Uh, I don't know what got into my head here. When I, oh, that's the arrow that's flowing in there, right? When, in that picture, I'd not see that. So it's not a seven. That, that's the arrow head that you're looking at. So it is 25.2 there that I written there. Right. So it's 25.2. So to add the two up, uh, you can see immediately six plus two is eight. So we know we've got the eight. And then uh, five plus two is seven. So we have the seven there. And two plus one is three. So it does add up. Um, if it did not add up, if this if this value at the end yet, the last node uh, did not sum up, then we've got an error somewhere in our network. And it means we've got to go back and recheck the values. We've, we've made a mistake somewhere. Right now, uh, Okay, let me just delete all of this. So we now have the flows at all of the nodes. Uh, just out of interest, uh, the reason why, you must be wondering that the, why this balanced up at the end. Uh, it's not some magic that has happened that uh, these two values are balanced up at the end. When we just guessed two values in between and suddenly we arrive here and everything is all cozy and it's so nicely balanced up. Uh, there's no magic happening uh, in this. Remember, like we said, if, if you regarded this whole network right, this, of pipelines, so this one, two, three, four, these five pipelines a network, the amount of water you're feeding into these pipelines uh, must equal to the total amount of water that you're taking out of these pipelines because these pipelines are not dams. There's no storage of water, and they're not rivers or whatever that they're just supplying you with water. Yeah. They cannot store water, and they cannot supply water. Right. They just they just a conduit for the water to flow through them. So into this whole A, this, if you if you took it as a whole A E C B, uh, how much do you have flowing in? You have 63 liters flowing in. So I, I just want to clear the clutter just to show you uh, the check that I'm going to do. I'll tell you why uh, it's all balanced out like this so nicely. Right? So that's something you also got to check uh, when you're doing your network. 
uh, that, that you would normally do that even before you've done these nodes, uh, the flow of the nodes. It was given to you in this problem, uh, so that's why we did not do it. Uh, but generally, if you as a designer, uh, you would need to check that because uh, you would decide how much uh, your flow you want into the network and how much of flow uh, you want to withdraw from that uh, from the network. Right? Depending on the number of houses that you have and or industries that you have, you would decide how much you want to pull out from the network and you would know how much Sorry, of water is arriving. Yes, you can go ahead. Um, how do you get the 25.2 from node uh, EC? That, that was the guessed value. We guessed that value. You see the two values in, oh, yeah, sorry, I just deleted that value now. The two values that were in uh, orange, those were values that we guessed. The, the, the two values, the 24 that I'm circling now, and the 25.2 we guessed. So that's just a purely guessed okay. value. Uh, you, you may have guessed another value. If you guessed another value, you would have arrived at a, at a different answer for uh, for uh, the flow in pipeline BE. So you may have, then you, you can get maybe an answer of uh, 5.4 or 5 liters per second or 20 liters per second, depending on what you guess for the flow in pipeline E. That's not a problem. <laughs> because as you do the iterations, it will converge to the correct value. Right. So in this particular problem, these were the two values we had to guess in this network, and then the rest all fall into place. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Now, okay, I was coming back to the question about that. If you look at uh, the 63 liters per second, uh, okay, let me just delete uh, more of these val of all the other lines that I've drawn here, uh, just to help you. Right. So if we look at uh, uh, let me just change the color of it. Also, uh, let's go back for the blue there. Uh, if you look at it, we got 63 liters per second flowing into our network. Right? 63 liters. And then we were drawing 25.2 uh, right at the bottom. You see the 25.2 and that 37.8 on the right hand side of node C. Uh, yeah, I haven't circled it so nicely there. Uh, we were drawing. The 37.8. If you add those two values, so if you add those two values, uh, if you add them up, the 25.2 and the 37.8, you'll see you get 63 liters per second. So the amount of flow into our network is equal to the amount of flow out of our network. Right? You can take out your calculator and add it up and you'll see that. Right? So it is that condition has to be satis uh, satisfied also. It's not explicitly stated. Uh, in the assumptions that you have here, uh, when we did all of these uh, assumptions here, you don't actually explicitly see it. It just talks of a junction or node. Right? But the same thing would apply to the network as a whole, because we don't have any reservoir here or anything to store water in our network. Obviously, if you had a reservoir, then uh, they might be then uh, the, <clears throat> the values would change. Then you then you have a different consideration right, to take into account. But with, there is no reservoir here, there is no dam, so there is no supply of water and there is no storage of water in this network. Right? So whatever flows in has to flow out. The amount flowing in has to flow out because you cannot store it anywhere and you cannot you're not feeding in, you, you don't have a supply anywhere within the network, right? The only supply is that 63, so 63 has to leave uh, from this network. So that's why that 25.2 and that 37.8 uh, have, have to add up to that 63 liters per second. And that is the reason then whatever value we guessed, for, for example, this 25.2, that is the reason when we add that 12.6 to the whatever value we have here, uh, that is the reason that it will balance up and you'll get that 37.8 and we do that check. Right? So that last check that I spoke about, that note C, uh, it, it must balance up. If it hasn't balanced up, then you've made a mistake somewhere. Right? There's, a, there's an error. Either there's an error in your assumption or, or in terms of how many liters are entering your network and how many liters are leaving your network, or there's an error in terms of uh, uh, your, the nodes that we isolated. Right? Somewhere uh, we made a mistake in our calculation. So that's uh, the first check that we do uh, in this Hardy cross method. Right? Then you, you then see that uh, you're given in a table here the length of those pipes. Uh, you would know that from your, uh, you, you would have a map or a drawing uh, or an engineering <clears throat> layout, a street layout, whatever. So you would know the length of your pipes. 
and then the assumed diameters for your pipes. Uh, as an engineer, you would have selected certain pipe sizes, so that's what you're checking. Uh, in this whole iterative process in an actual design, uh, you would first guess some values, and then uh, if it doesn't work out, uh, you would then come back and change these values and then repeat all the iterations. So uh, it's best, this Hardy Cross method is best done with a spreadsheet uh, if you're doing the design uh, in a design office. Uh, by doing it by hand uh, could mean many, many iterations because uh, with, uh, until you develop some experience and engineering judgment, it will be difficult for you to actually guess uh, these pipe sizes over here. But in a design uh, situation, you have to actually uh, choose those pipe sizes. Right, but there, in this question, the design, the pipe sizes are given to you, so you have that. We can, we now, uh, uh, we're then going to move on with the second part uh, of the, the second assumption then in uh, item six, and it tells, uh, in item six, we mentioned that around any loop in the grid, the sum of the head losses must equal to zero. Right, so this second uh, equation here, uh, to, to satisfy this or to do this check here, um, and, and and then to uh, uh, use the, the, this, this correction factor, uh, we'll do that together because this correction factor has got to do with the flow in the pipes. So we then have to uh, build up a table. So what we do, we then uh, draw up a table and in this table, now let's look what do we have uh, in this table. You can see we first will identify our loops. Uh, let me just pull out a red pen there maybe. Yeah, so we, the first thing is we, we identify our loop. So when you look at our drawing, uh, if you look at this drawing, we have two loops. Right? Uh, and some, if you look at it, we can identify. So let's call that uh, loop one uh, on the left-hand side, and let's call that loop two. Right? So these are the two loops that we have. So we will populate our table for those two loops. In loop one, there are three, pipe, three pipelines, pipeline A, B, Pipeline uh, BE, we call that node the BE, if you recall, and uh, pipeline B, uh, what's it, AE, doesn't matter whether you call it AE or EA. So the loop one has three pipes, uh, loop B has three pipes. Right? So uh, we, we so, uh, they've numbered it in this particular diagram, instead of calling it pipeline AB or BC, they called it simply pipeline one. Uh, pipeline three and pipeline two. Right. So for our loop, or loop one, we have pipeline one, pipeline two, and pipeline three. Right. So that's loop. Uh, that's in loop one. Right. And then uh, in loop two, let me use a different pen for that one. In loop two, we have pipeline two, to four, two, four, and five. So pipeline in loop two, we have uh, pipeline two, uh, pipeline four and pipeline five like that. So we ident so in this table we identify the loop. Let me go back to my red pen there. So we then uh, in the first column there you'll see you have loop one. And in loop one there are three pipes. So you can see uh, pipeline one, two and three. You see we ident identified it in the table there. So that's the pipeline one, two, three. Um, like that. And then I have loop two. And for loop two I have pipeline two, four and five and I've then identified it over here. Now in this uh, table, it, the, order in, the order in which you write the pipelines does not matter. You know, you could have written here uh, 213 or 312 or anything in uh, whichever order you want. It, it, it doesn't make any difference to your calculations. Right? There's no specific order. It's just so long as you identify all the pipes in that particular loop one and all the pipes in that particular loop two. Uh, we then, in the table, we're just feeding in the diameters of the pipe. Now, notice uh, it was given in millimeters in the table. Uh, we normally will talk in millimeters when we're designing it. We, we don't say a 0.15 the diameter pipe. We normally say a 150 diameter pipe. It's understood we're talking in millimeters. But in this table here, uh, we, the, our Hazen-William formula works with uh, meters. So we then will change it to meters. Right? So just note that that's an important thing. So we directly from the table, uh, we just copy the, the pipe diameters, but we convert them to meters. And we will also copy the pipe lengths like that. Right? So we're populating our table like that. So I'm just, as I'm, I'm circling it as we populate it, uh, you'll see so that you can see the order in which we're doing the calculations. So th this is no calculation. It's just uh, directly writing it over here. The length is in meters. right? So uh, you have to... Uh, the reason you convert 
thing that uh, me, diameter to meters also is uh, you got to compare apples with apples. You're going to be multiplying and substituting into an equation. So your length is in meters. Uh, your diameter must also be in meter, meters. You have to be consistent with your units. Right, so we fill in the diameters and the lengths. They're known to us from this table. Uh, the diameters may have been guessed values. Uh, the lengths we will know. They, they cannot be guessed values. Right? Uh, you would know uh, your layout you know, for the township or whichever area you're reticulating. You know from which point to which point you're reticulating, so you would know the lengths. Uh, then comes the calculation of this K value that you need over here. Now, you'll recall in uh, yesterday's notes, let me just go back uh, to that. <coughs> okay, let me go up here. Uh, we sp you'll see that, so let me just find that correct. Uh, we spoke about it. Uh, the, the, the form of the equation that we want <coughs> is in, whether we're using the darcy Weiss back equation, uh, or whichever uh, equation you're using. We want to write the head loss in the pipeline, that's uh, the HF, <clears throat> that's the friction losses. Right? So the friction head or the head loss in the pipe, the friction head is a loss. So we see the head, H for head and subscript F for friction. So the friction loss in the pipeline, we make that the subject of the formula. Now that's not, not the normal way in which these formulas are written, but if we write it, uh, the friction loss in the pipeline, or in fact, a simple, what we're actually calculating here is the hydraulic gradient. Right? The friction loss here, this HF that you calculated, is the hydraulic gradient. So it's the friction loss per meter length of pipeline. Right? That's what we're actually calculating. That's what this HF that you've calculated here, or making the subject of the formula is. It's the friction loss uh, per meter length of pipeline. And we will then write, uh, rewrite the, whichever equation that we have in that particular format, uh, K times Q to some power like that. Right, so that's the, <clears throat> what we, uh, well, we want to write it like. So the, and, and in that, that's the K value that we're talking of, uh, that we now want in the table. So it means we, you first have to represent your equation in this particular form. Now, if you go back, uh, I'm just gonna open again. Um, when we, in, in the first lecture that we did, we covered the Hazen-William equation. Right, you'll recall that, the Hazen-William equation. That's what we're using in this particular one. And the, the, the format of that equation, that's the standard format uh, that we have it in. Right. Now you'll see that the S value here, the S value, uh, that's the friction loss or the hydraulic gradient. The, the hydraulic gradient is simply the friction loss per meter length of the pipeline. Right. So that's what we have over here. That's the slope uh, of that pipeline. And the slope of the pipeline is giving you the delta y value uh, per meter length. If you, uh, from your equation in maths, y is equal to mx plus a, a or whatever. I don't know how you, for the equation for the straight line. Uh, uh, you must have done that. Uh, you would have done that in maths, whatever. So it's this y is equal to mx plus a, the m value, the slope or the gradient of that line. So that's what this s uh, represents over here. Uh, it's the slope or the uh, the friction loss per meter length of your pipeline over here. So you then uh, uh, t maybe spend some time, I know many students battle in the calculation of the K value or they make mistakes in it. Uh, rewrite it, uh, this equation, and make S the subject of your formula, right? Uh, make S the subject of your formula. Also note that in this equation, uh, <clears throat> here in this equation, uh, the Q value that you have is in cubic meters per second, right? But we, our flow values are in liters per second, right? So uh, one liter per second, we have to divide it by a thousand to convert it to a, cubi to a meter, to cubic meter. That there are a thousand liters uh, in one meter cubed. So our liters per second value will divide it by a thousand and, and that will convert it to cubic meters per second. So uh, spend some time with this, go back to this equation, rewrite it and make uh, S the subject of your formula. Right? Uh, you just want S, so even that power you want to take out from there. So it's not that difficult to do it. You, you just take the Q, you divide it by that 0.278 CD right up to that power, and then you'll uh, then uh, raise all of that uh, or take the uh, take the root of it, uh, not square root, uh, uh, root it to 0 0.54 on both sides, and then so then you'll then extract the S over there, and uh, that's how you, you 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 can do that. I leave it to you to do that, and uh, they have the, uh, make S the subject of the formula there. Okay, so. Once you've done that, uh, you would then 
come to an equation uh, that looks similar to what you see uh, uh, on the top here. That you, you then would end up with an equation uh, that looks something like this. You notice the powers have changed. It is because of, uh, remember this, uh, this was as S in that equation. This was the S, the HF, what we call in here uh, HF. Uh, it was S in that previous equation, and it was raised to the power 0 0.54, and here it's not to a power, so that's why uh, all the powers have changed. Uh, that's right. uh, we had previously at that uh, 0 0.278, we now have 10.7 here. Uh, again, it's to do with those power values that we're changing over there. So uh, spend some time and just do it, do yourself a favor and go to this, uh, uh, to convert the equation, make S the subject of the formula and do that. Right. Now, in this particular question, we're given uh, the C value, C, uh, that's your Hazen William constant. We spoke about that earlier. We said it is probably an old cast iron steel pipe based on that value. So the C value uh, that's uh, given here in this equation and the Q, just remember we're working with in liters per second. So uh, if we then go to substitute, so because uh, the Q is in, our, we, want to, we want to enter our answers in liters per second. So we need to divide it by a thousand to convert it to a meter cube per second. Right. And now we need this K value over here. So what is the K? The K is, uh, you want to rewrite that equation so it's in so that it's in this particular form over here, right? So it's in this particular form. So if you the the, the k value here in this equation, uh, let me just delete uh, all the other red lines here so then it will be clearer to you. If you look at it, study it carefully, uh, you'll see it's actually this particular term here. Do you see that it's actually that? whole term there you've got to remove. So you just you, you want to pull out the Q from here. So another, or another, way, another way of looking at it is uh, you want to rewrite this equation that you have here. Uh, you want to rewrite it, but you want to pull out the Q separately from this equation. So you want to make it uh, something times uh, Q uh, to the 1.85 to 1.8, what's it, 8? Five two there like that. So you, you you want to extract the Q from there, pull out the Q separately, and then have the rest of the terms over there. You can see that's what we've done uh, in this bottom equation over here. And if you do that, uh, I've written it in blue uh, before the lecture. I just wrote it down to, to assist you that. Uh, this, excuse me, this, at the bottom, this is a D. It looks like a square or a rectangle. Uh, it's just my writing. With, I'm writing with a mouse, so I'm battling there. That it's D to the power 4.8. So, so this is the actual value of K that you're then going to calculate uh, in this table over here. So that's the formula uh, that's being used to calculate these values for K over here. Uh, it's a common uh, query I get from students. Uh, they usually tell me that they, they're not getting the value of K or they come up with completely different values. Uh, and that's why I've spent some time explaining this to you. Right? So you can see it's the 10.7 times L, we've got that. Uh, the CH at the bottom to the 1.852, that's still there. Uh, the D to the 4.8 zone, that's there. And then you can see I've now extract, uh, I've I've removed the Q from here. Right? So I removed the Q, so it will be 1 over 1,000 to that power 1.852, so 1 over 1,000 to the power 1.852. So I've pulled out the Q from there. So that's where we got, so when you pull out the Q, we separated it. The Q will still have the power, right? but now it's on its own over there. Uh, from your, ex you've done uh, uh, in maths your exponent laws, so you simply, uh, I'm sure you'll follow it and you'll agree that it's mathematically correct what we've done here. Right? Just uh, think back uh, and try and recall your uh, exponent laws, and then you'll see we can do that. We can pull out the uh, Q and write it by itself like that to that power. So as long as we keep that power there, it's all fine what we've done over here. So that's the calculation of the K in this table. Right, so uh, we now do that for each pipe uh, to calculate the pipe. Uh, the, see, if you look at the subject of this formula, you need the L value. Uh, let me just, yeah, okay, I got a red pen. You need the, the L value. Uh, you need the, the you, you need the C, the uh, constant. You're gonna you're gonna need the C. Uh, we haven't input the C value in this particular table, right? Uh, if you want to put it in, uh, you can make a separate column for the C value. Uh, that's not a problem. In this particular example, the C is given, so we're working with that C value all the time. Right? So 
Uh, I'll tell you why this, why they haven't put it in this table in a minute. Uh, but you can, if you want to, uh, normally under normal circumstances, you might prefer to put a C value there, especially if you've got different pipe types. Uh, so uh, that's the C uh, in that equation. Uh, the diameter of the pipe, we've got it on the table. The diameter is there, so from there, and uh, that's all. And then uh, the rest we just multiply. So that's how you arrive at this K value. Right? So basically, you're multiplying the diameter. Uh, the L, it's not diameter times L, it's obviously the, to the correct powers as you see it in that equation over here. So there's the equation on the top. Um, let me just uh, delete some of all the sort of add that I've put in here. Uh, right, so uh, you've got the equation here, uh, you see on the top of the screen that I've put it for you. That's the equation that, uh, you, ha that you have. Uh, please check it. Uh, go home, do the, what I've told you and rewrite this equation like this and see that you actually come up with that same equation. So we, that, we, we now calculated uh, the K values uh, in the table, so you could populate the value for the K. Uh, the, the flow in each uh, pipeline now, uh, we will now go back to our equation. Uh, now that we have that K value, uh, we know what the K values, uh, we can then, uh, sorry, we don't calculate the Q. The Q values that you see here are from this diagram that we did over here, you know, when we balance the flows, so you can see in pipeline one, 24 liters per second. So that's the 24 that we have there. In pipeline two, we had 11.4. So that's the value that we got there. So the values that we have in this diagram, uh, our flow balancing diagram, right, that we will now enter these values into the table. So that's where we've got these values. Uh, this note, you'll notice that they have plus and negative signs in front of them. And the reason they have those plus and negative signs, I'm going back to this, you can see that there was a sign convention. Uh, when we're doing this to calculate the head losses, we have a sign convention and we said clockwise, clockwise flows in the loop are considered positive. Right? Clockwise, the loop, uh, clockwise in the loop is considered positive. So if we come back to this diagram, uh, when we look at this loop, so we now look at the loop, uh, we're looking at loop one. Uh, the 24 you can see is a clockwise flow. Right? It's clockwise in that loop, it's flowing clockwise direction in that loop. So the 24 will be positive. The 11.4 in this loop is clockwise in this loop, so it will be positive. Uh, the 39 liters per second in loop one, if you look at it, it's anti-clockwise. Right? It's moving in that direction, so that's why it's a negative number. <clears throat> so it's only the 39 that's negative in loop one. And that's what you see in this uh, diagram here. You can see there that the 39 uh, has a negative value in front of it. So you need to be very careful. You must get these signs correct. Uh, you make one mistake with one sign here and all your calculations will be wrong thereafter. Right, so that's uh, for loop one. For loop two, uh, we come back to loop two and we look at it. <clears throat> we can see in the flow in pipe four is this clockwise flow that we're now looking at loop two. So four is a positive value. Uh, pipeline uh, five, you can see, is anti. Uh, pipeline five is anti-clockwise, is negative, and pipeline two will also be. If you look at it, uh, it's, it's moving in that direction. So it's an anti-clockwise direction. So pipeline two in loop two is actually negative, and pipeline five are negative. Right. So two and five will be negative. So when you look at the flow values that are input. Uh, it's something uh, yes you can see that in uh, both uh, pipeline 2 that we're looking at pipeline 2 uh, if you look go back to pipeline 2 you can see that's a negative value neg negative 11.4 and pipeline 5 you can see uh, is a negative value of 25.2 now notice something uh, it might have caught your attention already that pipeline 2 is the common pipe between those two loops Okay, right. so I'm just going to delete all of this because uh, just to clear the clutter uh, from this table, we know we, we're covering the columns from left to right, right, so you're aware of that, so you know what's populated in these other columns. So pipeline two uh, is the common pipe between those two loops. Uh, there has to be at least one common pipe uh, between any two loops. There has to be a common pipe somewhere, uh, otherwise they're two separate networks. Right? So the one pipe makes it co the common pipe makes it into one big network. And notice here, uh, in 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 loop one we had a positive value. And in loop two, we had a negative value, right? the same flow value in the same pipe, but in one network, it's positive, and in one network, it's negative. And that will always be like that. 
Right, in one network, it's going to be positive. In one loop, sorry, in one loop, it will be positive, and in one loop, it will be negative because it's a shared common pipe. So if you look at it, whichever way the direction of flow is, uh, if, if in one side on for the one side, it's uh, if you got the arrow like that, for the left hand side, it will be clockwise, and for the right hand side loop, it will be anti-clockwise that direction. Right, so that will always happen uh, in that manner that we have like that over there. So uh, this is something to be cautious of over there. Uh, it's, it's not an error that has occurred. Or it's, it's not, not, nothing that's written wrong in the table. So now that we've calculated, we've entered, we're not, we haven't done calculations here in this particular table. We, we did the calculations previously when we did this node balancing. So we entered our Q values with the correct signs. We then will proceed to calculate the head loss in the pipe. You see where we had... We calculated the K value. Sorry. We have calculated the K value over there. So that's the K value in that equation. Uh, we know what the Q value is. We know what Q, we've entered that. So we've got the Q value. So we can then go and calculate what's the friction loss in the pipeline, right? the friction loss in that particular pipe. And that's what we're now going to do. Uh, we'll calculate the friction loss uh, in the pipe. and. Uh, that's what the HF is, the friction loss in, in so many meters over there. So the friction loss will simply be that times that value over there, and that's what we've got over here. That's so the friction loss in that. So if you take, for example, uh, <coughs> uh, sorry, I'm pointing at the wrong one there. That's the friction loss over there. So that friction loss, uh, you would simply take this value of Q, uh, raise it to that power 1.852, uh, and multiply uh, that by the K value that we've calculated, and that will give us our HF uh, form that we have there. So now that we have the HF values, uh, we write it down in the table like that. Uh, note again the sign. Uh, if, if, if the flow is positive, then the friction loss is positive. If the flow is negative, then the friction loss is negative. Right? So you can see it has the same sign uh, as the Q values. So you'll do it for loop one and for loop two. And then you notice at the bottom we are summing it up. We add up the values above, right? So we're just adding for for loop one, we've done that sum, and for loop two also, you will then do the sum. Now, why why do you sum it up? Why do you, and it it could be positive or negative values that you would get in this sum. Uh, uh, you, why do you sum it up? Because if you look at your friction, uh, the the delta, uh, the correction factor equation you can see you have that uh, delta h value over there and you're going to put a negative in front of that so that's the value that goes in there and you can see uh, that 0.28 that's what's come into this uh, uh, the, the the correction factor equation uh, for that one so the delta was for loop one uh, the, the subscript one tells you that's for loop one the correction factor for loop one and delta two is the correction factor for loop two and there you can see it, it's come down uh, into that equation there. Uh, we then calculate the HF, the same HF that we have here, and divide it by the Q0, the same Q0 that we have in the table. So we do that, and we will end up with these values that we have here, <coughs> uh, that you see uh, in this. You're then going to sum that up. Or you, or you do the summation for that. Uh, so again, uh, you'll do the summation, and the reason you're going to sum it is because that's how, uh, that's the term that appears uh, in your delta, your, your correction factor equation. Right, so you see that 0.64, uh, that's now uh, coming to the denominator here in the equation. That's where it is for the first loop, and for the second loop, uh, you can see it uh, in the denominator there. In that equation you can see <clears throat> uh, if you look at the equations you'll see that's exactly what we have there the summation uh, so I, I didn't actually circle the summation there uh, that's exactly what we have here uh, the summation term over there so that's what we that's what we're just plugging in uh, we then <clears throat> uh, you'll also see that for the hazen william equation the n value is 1.85 so that's why uh, we have 1.85 uh, in these correction factor equations uh, for the Hazen William equation. So, using the Darcy Weisbach equation, it would then be uh, 2, 2.0, or depending which other equation you're having, accordingly, you would adjust it to that. Right. So, that's we now worked out the correction factors. Uh, notice you'll get a sign, they could be positive or negative. 
Now again, I just want to uh, delete all the clutter from my joint just to further explain uh, what else we do. <clears throat> okay, so we 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 have the the, the correction fa factors for the two loops. Uh, correction factor one for loop one, correction factor two for loop two. <clears throat> uh, we then will now write down the correction factor. Right now, for the entire loop, it's the same correction factor that's being used. So that's why you see, for example, for loop one, uh, we had a value of negative uh, 0.24. So we then write the correction factor negative 0.24, negative 0.24 over there. Right? And for all three pipes, we write it. So you can see negative 0.24, and it's carrying the same negative sign. But now loop two, if you go back, uh, loop two was the common pipe. So uh, pipe one only belongs to loop one. Pipe three only belongs to loop one. But pipe two belongs to two loops. It belongs to loop one and to loop two. So pipe two will have two correction factors. It receives a correction factor from loop one, and it also receives a correction factor from loop two. <clears throat> so that's what we see being input into this diagram. So you can see that, okay, we took the input from loop one and we, uh, the correction factor from loop one and we have it over there. So, okay, again, I'm just going to delete the other, <clears throat> just delete that so you can make it clearer. Now, notice something. <clears throat> we are looking at loop one. So the, for the correction factor for loop one, we just took it as it is with, with its sign and everything and plugged it in there. The correction factor for loop two, notice um, you might have already picked it up. Notice the sign has changed. Right? The sign is swapped over. We had a negative uh, 0 0.57, but we're now putting a positive 0 0.57. Now, why is that? Why, why are we changing the sign with the, like that? Why are we changing the sign? <clears throat> because, okay, if we get a negative uh, correction factor, if we recall that when we did the derivation, uh, let me go back here. When we did the derivation uh, factor and we did these terms, uh, if you, sorry, when, when we derived that equation, I just want to help you recall. Remember that uh, the correction factor, we were reducing a, a positive correction factor, means we are reducing uh, the clockwise flow, We're assuming that the clockwise is more than the anti clockwise flow. You recall that when I, in the last lecture that I spoke about, that correction factor. And you see, we use the two different signs on the different for the clockwise and the anti-clockwise. Right. So a positive value tells you that the correction uh, is, it means you're reducing. So if you're reducing the clockwise flow, then what you do? It means you're going to uh, have flow in the anti-clockwise direction, right? If you're doing that. So it tells you that uh, in your loop, the, uh, a, a positive value tells you that the flow, the correction is in an anti-clockwise direction. And uh, a negative value tells you that the, uh, the correction is actually in a clockwise direction in that loop, right? So let's come back to this example, and what it's telling us. So, uh, let me. Uh, yes, yes, you got the query. No, you please repeat that part again, please, sir. Which part about the correction factor, the signs? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, what it may, what it tells you that the zero, uh, zero point, uh, the negative zero point two four. If you look at it, it's going to reduce all our clockwise flows. Right? If, uh, so, sorry, the, the, we had this flow of 24, and then it's going to reduce it. Right? So if it's reducing the clockwise flow, it's not adding to it. So it means that the correction factor is actually anti-clockwise in direction. Right? So for example, okay, let me just uh, enlarge this on the screen, and let's talk about it. If you look, look what's happening. right? The, the the negative 0 0.24, uh, okay, uh, I'm trying to get it to fit on the screen so you see both. You got negative 0 0.24, and we're adding negative 0 0.24 to that 24. Right? So it's in that direction. You see that? So our correction factor is in <clears throat> that direction like that over there. Right? So uh, a negative correction factor, if you look at that, that's an anti-clockwise flow. Right? You notice that? Right? Uh, that's what it is, because it's in that particular direction, right? So it's going in that particular direction like that. So it's reducing the 24, it's reducing the 11.4. If you look at it in our table, 
the the correction factor, which was sorry, the, the the negative, uh, we had the the, the flow 11.4. So to that 11.4, we're going to minus the 0.24. See, that's what we're correcting it by. So we're reducing it. So it, it means the 11.24 was downwards. So to reduce it, it means the correction is upwards. Right? That you're having you're adding a flow of 0 0.24 upwards over there. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Thank you very right. much. Okay. So that the next, so it's it, now when you come to loop two, right? When you come to loop uh, uh, loop two, right? That red is actually what 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 was anti-clockwise in loop one is actually clockwise in loop two. You see the red value that I've drawn the arrow there, that correction factor. It's actually a clockwise flow in loop two, so it will be positive in loop two. Right? So you'll see when we do it in pipeline two. Do you see that we actually put a positive value where my cursor is circling now? Okay, maybe if I use a different uh, color, uh, you'll see it much more quicker. Uh, let me just put a, change it back to a blue pen. Uh, so you can see that that correction factor of negative 0 0.24 becomes a positive in loop 2. Do you see that? Notice it's the same, but we change the sign. The same thing over here. We put it, brought it across, but we changed the sign over there. Right. And the same for the same argument will hold for uh, loop two. If we had a negative sign in loop two, so if we had a negative sign, then again, uh, let's okay, let me just uh, draw it, and you'll see uh, it's, it's an important point. Uh, and again, uh, something that uh, most students make a mistake with. So let me spend some time on it. Right. So. For, for loop two, we had an answer of 0 0.57. That's our correction factor, that 0 0.57. So it means that uh, if, and if we look at it, uh, look at how we're adding it in the table here, 0 0.57. We, uh, we're adding it as a negative flow over there. Now, cl our clockwise is positive, isn't it? Clockwise flow is positive. So this one is negative. So anti-clockwise would be negative flow. So we have to add it in an anti-clockwise direction. So it means that we're going to add it uh, in that. Okay, let me change the color again to red so you can see it. Uh, it means that that 0 0.57, I'm not writing the number, but I'm just saying that, that 0 0.57, you're going to apply it over there like that. And you've got to apply it uh, like that. And you then got to apply it uh, like that in those to those three pipes in loop two. We're now looking at loop two, right? So that's our the correction factor that we apply, right? So we you can see it now from that formula, we it, we're changing the flow value. So it's a flow. The correction factor is actually a flow, right? And we're correcting the flows with this over here. And so you see, for the 12.6, uh, it's going to be minus from the 12.6. And there, you, if you look at it, you have 12.6 uh, for pipeline four. And you can see there's the minusing, uh, you're minusing it from the 12.6. So if you, it's almost, it means the final flow will become almost 12. And that's what you have over here, the final flow almost 12. Right. So uh, for pipeline two, now that shared common one, right? uh, this value here, uh, this arrow that you look at here, it, it's pointing downwards. This is an anti-clockwise flow in loop two. But to apply the same correction factor to loop one, it is now becomes a clockwise flow. In loop one, this arrow is actually in a clockwise direction. Right? In loop one, it's that's clockwise. This this flow in pipeline two, this correction, this red arrow is actually a positive value. So that's why you look at that 0.57 uh, in the table and it's positive over there. Right? So you see that when you take a correction factor to the to to the other loop, you have got to change the sign. So you calculated a correction factor for loop one then the correction factor for loop one when you apply it to the common pipe in loop two you got to change its sign same thing for loop two you work out the correction factor when you apply that correction factor to the common pipe in loop one you swap the sign over whatever sign you had here you, you change the sign right and i've explained hopefully you've understood now why we do that why do we change that signs right because uh, you, if you're not sure you can actually sit and draw these arrows like what I've done, and you'll see that, yes, you've got to swap the sign each time like that. Right, so uh, we then have the correction factors, and uh, just to recap, uh, the pipe that's common to both loops uh, will have both correction effect factors applied to it in this particular one, obviously with the correct signs uh, for the other loop. Right. So we then calculated this uh, correction factor uh, that we need to apply. Uh, you notice the unit is liter per second, so it's a correction to the flows. 
And we then, uh, once you've got that, you then add this value uh, to the Q value. So you're going to add it uh, to your Q value, the original value that you had, and then you come up uh, with a final value for your Q value here. Right, so you then uh, sum those two values, uh, and you will then pick up the Q value that you have here. Right, so this is now your corrected flow. Right, you guessed, uh, initially we guessed a value of 24 in pipe 1. Um, Oh, so where was it? We guessed that value of 21, and this whole process, uh, Hardy Cross method, has corrected it that no, it actually should be 23.76. Now this is just one iteration that we've done. Right? So we come, if you notice, we now have revised values for all our uh, flows in the pipe. We can then do a second iteration and a third iteration and a fourth iteration, and we do that by copying these values. Okay, now let me. Let's delete again the clutter from the string to show you. What we will then do for the second iteration, uh, let me change my pen color. Okay, for the second iteration, we take the values of the corrected values of Q that we calculated, and we then just plug them uh, in that, in Q naught over here. So we'll replace our Q naught values. The diameter of the pipe hasn't changed, the length hasn't changed, the K value will therefore still stay the same, uh, but we now have new Q values. And the moment we have new uh, new values for Q, then these values will have, the, the, the rest of these values will then change. So we will then get uh, revised values for the next three columns. Right? So we will then have to revise these three columns, and that's what we do in the next iteration. So you can see in this iteration, that this is now the second iteration that's being done. Uh, let me just show you. And in this new iteration, we've put in the revised Q values. Right? Uh, the, 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 the first column, second column, uh, third column, fourth column, fifth column are an exact copy of what's in the first table. Right, so in the exact copy for me, we just copied these across into the second table. And then in the second table, what was the final flow in the first table now becomes the initial flow uh, in the second table. And we then recalculate, uh, we then got to recalculate the balance of the columns similar to what we've done before. And we'll get new correction factors and then we'll apply them those new correction factors like that. And we can then repeat the whole process with a third iteration and a fourth iteration and a fifth and as many iterations that you want. Now, how do you know that you're arriving at the, the correct value? As your correction, you, you'll notice that the correction factors will start decreasing. Right? They get smaller and smaller. So as your correction factors approach zero, both of them, as you start getting closer to zero, then you'll know that the values that you have for your flow uh, are reasonably correct. They, they, they're close to the correct value because you're needing, if, if, they are, uh, if they are almost close to the spot on value, well, then there's hardly any correction to make. Right. So uh, as the, the correction factors get smaller uh, and until you're happy with it, maybe you'll want it correct to the third decimal point or something. Uh, remember, this is in uh, me, uh, liters per second. So uh, uh, 0 0.00. .00 uh, five or something like that. It's a, it's a very small uh, error that you're making in there. Uh, even the 0 0.09 liters per second, uh, maybe that's uh, depending on the, on the designer. Some might want a more accurate value. But as uh, personally, as I see it over here, I would still do uh, a third iteration uh, based on the values that I'm seeing here for these errors over here. And, and you'll also notice when you look, because the errors are small, uh, these well, the, the right hand side column, your final Q value, the final Q value will have a very small change when you move to the next iteration and the following iteration. And so that's what we do. So we we, we repeat that, uh, and we got to uh, do the iterations, and then eventually, uh, when we're happy with it, then that's the final flow in the network. Now I just mentioned to you that okay, these uh, uh, <clears throat> these correction factors will decrease, right? I told you they'll get smaller and smaller. It does sometimes happen. That suddenly, that they might actually get bigger initially. You might see quite so. Uh, we had a correction factor of 0 0.24. Uh, maybe suddenly, then uh, maybe the next iteration you do, you get a correction factor of uh, 0 0.5 or something like that. Right? It it can happen like that. What it's telling you when when you see that happening, right? The change in it, that the the, the magnitude of the change. It's what what it uh, when that happens is if you guessed the wrong direction. So, for example, in this uh, problem here, 
we guessed, let me just uh, delete all this, uh, what I've written here, let me just, just delete all the clutter from there. Right, so in this particular example, uh, just been, I, I've deleted something from this equation at the bottom, so as you see it now, don't use it. Okay, let me just put it down there. Uh, what, what, we guessed this value of 24, and we assumed it was a clockwise flow like that. Right? We assumed it is a clockwise flow. But if we had guessed it wrong, and it's actually supposed to be, let's say if the correct value was in that direction, let's say maybe it was supposed to be 10 liters per second, if you, the exact value is supposed to be like that, that that's when you'll see that the correction factor initially increases, but then again, it will self-correct and then it will start changing sign and it will uh, it will then start decreasing and approach zero like that. So it's not always uh, something to be alarmed about. Uh, if you see that the correction factor uh, for, a, for maybe one or two iterations, either, it's actually getting bigger and then sudden, and then after that, you'll see it will be getting smaller. If it's just continuously getting bigger, then you're making a mistake. Somewhere you've made, uh, you've committed an error. Right. But it has to converge. Uh, it's the way the method was uh, derived. It will uh, converge in the end. So it has to uh, the end, uh, start getting less and less and less. Like that. So that's just something I wanted to alert to you uh, in, from a practical point of view. If you're writing a spreadsheet and you can use it at work or something, uh, if you do see that that value getting bigger, uh, don't initially be too alarmed. Uh, it, it may be that you've guessed the wrong direction and it's now trying to self-correct. Right, so it's trying to convert this uh, 23 points, for example, 23 points of in this first day, it was trying to convert that 24 into a negative value. So that's why you'll get big values initially, big changes, and then suddenly it will start uh, getting smaller values after a while. And so that's the Hardy cross method. I've explained it in quite some detail to you. Uh, just to help you understand, because uh, just looking at this table, uh, it's not always that uh, easy to just follow what's going on. There's an example there after that follows, and I want you to go through it. The difference, uh, firstly, now you have an extra pipe in each uh, in a loop, so it's just an, uh, uh, more calculations. It doesn't help you with the understanding of it the extra, it's just more work to do. Uh, you now have uh, four pipes in each loop, <clears throat> but the big difference between this one and the next one, which is what I want you to understand. Uh, you now have, in the first example, we assumed that this pipeline is on a flat ground. <clears throat> we assumed, in other words, the elevation head is the same at all the nodes. That's what we assumed in this example. The way it's calculated, the way it's done, uh, it's that the elevation head is all at the same level. Now, in practice, that will never happen. Right? Uh, the, our ground is undulating. Uh, we have hills and valleys and things. Uh, even in the township, one end of the street is higher than the other end of the street. Uh, if you're all flat, uh, you'll get flooding. <laughs> when it rains, you'll get flooding. So we always have a slope. Uh, it's like that. Uh, just out of interest, if, uh, I once did a design in uh, Cape Flats. Uh, I think the place was called Philippi. Philippi. And th that place is really flat. <laughs> Right, uh, that that uh, area there, uh, that is actually flat. I think it's even called the Cape Flats. That's why they call it the Cape Flats over there. Right? But other than that, I think the uh, most of the the country, especially KwaZulu Natal, uh, is not all flat like that. Right? So, uh, so you, uh, uh, what I'm getting to is that your nodes in practice will have different elevation heads, and the second example uh, guides you through how to handle that when you've got different elevation heads. So in the table, you see uh, uh, you're given, the, the, again, the, the, the pipe uh, lens and the pipe diameters. But there's a second table, uh, which was not in the first example. In the second table, you're actually given the elevation head for each pipe. Right? So you're given the elevation head of each pipe like that. Uh, and it, it takes you to now you'll do the calculations. Uh, in the actual tables, it doesn't make a, a difference. But in the end, you've got to now adjust for that. Now, this is a practical situation because when we design a pipeline, uh, we're always interested in what's our residual head. Remember, we said minimum 24, uh, maximum of 90 meters of head. Yeah. So this is where now we will up, uh, we got to, to, to arrive at that answer of minimum 24 and maximum 90. Uh, you need the elevation head at each node. 
right? So you now take into account the elevation head of each node and uh, go through it. It's not that difficult to, to follow. Uh, I'll leave that to you. I've explained the first example in quite a bit of detail for you. So uh, go work to this uh, second example. Um, the, the the slide presentation you have uh, on, on on Moodle currently has a lot of extra slides uh, which you don't really need to study or know. Uh, so I'll, I will upload this one yet. I only, I only need you to study these two particular examples. And if you understand these two, you've understood the Hardy Cross uh -huh. method. Right. So I will uh, delete the old one and I'll upload the new one. And I'll, I'll send out an email uh, as soon as I've done that, as soon as I've uploaded this new uh, one. So uh, if you've already printed it out, it's fine. You can just throw away the extra pages. Uh, just make sure uh, that you just see that you have these uh, the, the pages that I have. You can see the bottom of the page does have numbers here. Uh, you can see that there is a number, so just keep these particular pages and throw away the rest of them. Uh, so this example takes you through the whole thing. You can see similar calculations being done like that. Wow. Similar uh, what work is out the of. Key value? Sorry, what, what's the query uh, question? There's no key values in those tables. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, I'm sure okay, they would have, maybe it's uh, not shown in the table, uh, but they would have to be, uh, okay. they've used the F, okay, maybe it's a different equation that's being used over here. I never actually noticed that before. Uh, okay, thanks for that question. I will look into it and I'll, uh, in my email, I'll give you an answer for that also. I'm just looking, they don't actually specify which method to use, uh, whether to use the Hazen and William or the, Manning equation or Darcy Weisbach equation. They're not saying which equation in this particular question. Uh, okay, but thanks for that. I will I, I, I'll uh, investigate it and I'll come back to you. I see they have see the friction loss is being calculated at the HF, so that is definitely uh, being done in this particular uh, example. Uh, but uh, and the sum of that, okay, yeah, that's done in that table there. The first iteration they've done that. Uh, and I'm sure this F value that they got here, that's the actual, the, that's the friction that they're actually working out in the pipeline. So uh, I'll confirm that with you. I, I think what's written here is F should probably be the K value, uh, but I, I will confirm that with you. But, uh, my apologies for that. I will answer that question through an email. Uh, any other queries? Anybody else? Uh, quick Either one, sir. Yeah. So wait, just before uh, I take the second question, you'll notice that the, the iterations are done. And then after that, they're applying the corrections. You can see here the, the velocity and the pressure. If you know what Q is, you can then calculate the, the, the velocity in the pipe, and you can then calculate the actual uh, the, the, the actual pressure heads in the pipe. So from that point, so, so you'll see the last two tables. Uh, this is addition over and above what we've done in the previous examples. Okay, uh, the, 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 the question? Uh, are we going to be given the the k value formula during the test, uh, or you have to know it by heart? Uh, no, you must uh, you must derive the correct k value. You won't be. It's it's not given to you, right? Because it's dependent on which equation you're using. So you would need to uh, use the appropriate. Yeah, you must derive the k value for that particular equation. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other queries? Anybody else? Anybody? Any? Okay, if there's no further queries. No, uh, uh, sorry, yes. uh, one question. Yes, go ahead. For this example, we calculated the K using uh, the 6.02 times 10 to the minus 9, that formula there. Wait, wait, let me just go back. <laughs> on, on page 45, 47, 47. Page 47, yeah, this one here, that K value. Uh, okay, what, what's being done here? Right? Because the H, uh, the, the CH is given in this particular, we know it that in this particular example, uh, the, the Hazen William coefficient was 100. So that's been substituted. So that's why that term over there, if you look at it, that you got the 10.7. So that term over there uh, has been calculated and that's been worked out to that value that you have over here, 6.02 times 10 to the power minus 9. 
understand. So that that's where it's come from. And then you can see the L, the, the balance of that is still in that equation over there because they they are really substituted for the C value. So yeah, so that's what was used over here. But it's the same formula that we have. What what I've written for you in blue, uh, still the same formula that's being used there. Now, just bear in mind. I think I've deleted something from here. Uh, let me just go back and look at it. Uh, 10.7 CW. While I was clearing the cutter from the, uh, no, but, Nicola, but if you, uh, I deleted if you the D value. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I deleted the D there from that equation. Right. So, what's your question? If you take 10.7 over CH, which is 100 to the power 1.852, it doesn't give you a 6.02 times 10 to the minus 9. Uh, That's what I'm confused might, about. It, it might have something to do with the units. 10.7 there, we took it. The L is still the same. We haven't divided the T. Uh, the D, we're using the same diameter. Okay, we're, uh, for D, we, we, we're using it in meters, so we're not doing the conversion there. Uh, you should, uh, no, it, uh, okay. it should still be the same answer. I'm, I'm, let me just take out my calculator. Maybe you're doing something, or maybe I've done something wrong with my calculator. Uh, okay, uh, wait, let me just. Okay, uh, what I'll do, t t t just to show you that we actually, it is that same thing over there. Uh, I've got another example for you, uh, which I want you to actually do as a tutorial. And, and I'll. Sh uh, let me just show that to you. Uh, where is it? This is a, uh, it's also on Moodle uh, for you. You can download it. And this is a, uh, a tutorial for you to work through also, an additional one. You can see here you have a different value for CH in this uh, example of here. CH is 130. You're given that. Uh, this is a diagram uh, given you to balance your flows and see. And remember, you must always check that uh, this, you've got 65 flowing in, so you need to have this check that you have 65 flowing out, even before you start uh, working out what the flows in the individual pipes are. But you're going to guess some flows, and then you're going to work that out. <coughs> to help you, uh, in this particular example, I've guessed two values over here. Right? So these are just purely guessed values. They're not the 15 and the 5 liters per second here. I've guessed those values. And so you can fill in the rest of those values in those tables. Uh, this is this question is taken out from a past exam paper. So uh, I guessed certain values so that we you will all get the same answers as me. This makes my marking easier. But uh, otherwise, each one of you will guess a different value, and every every other calculation will be different. Right. So for this from a marking point of view, I didn't change it. In the end, after if you did like five six iterations or four or five iterations, they would all converge to more or less the same value. Right. But uh, uh, the, the numbers would all be different prior to that. So if I, by me doing this, uh, I then force you to use certain values and then it makes it my marking easier. So that's what that, that's the only reason that that 15 and 5 liters uh, were used there. So those are my guest values. <clears throat> and then the, uh, the calculation of this K factors for you for, to do in the table, I've just put the separate table. And there you see the table that uh, you need to populate. Right? So uh, very similar to the table that you've seen in those slides over here. And I, I want you to go through this particular example. Letter. Now, the solution for that is also the memo is also on Moodle, and you'll see I've put it up, and I've actually done uh, four iterations over here uh, on this, and you'll see. Uh, and you can see as we're going along, the uh, it's getting closer towards the zero value, but it's still not uh, uh, accurate enough. No, still I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Just this K value is annoying me. Yeah. Can okay, you now, show us yeah, how yeah. to do yeah, the right, first okay. K value? Yeah, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about that. I'm getting to that. So just to show you that now, you see the K value that we have here right, uh, that, for this particular equation. And I'll share with you the spreadsheet that I've done here. Right Now that's, oh, wait, sorry, I haven't shared it with you. I'll show you my spreadsheet. And uh, let me just unshare that particular document. And I'll show you the formula that's there. And it's exactly like you see the one that I've used. Uh, why that is not, I'll, I'll check it and again I'll reply with the email, right? So there's two things, the K value for uh, the second problem and for this particular one. But I just want to show you, uh, just bear with me please, I just want to share that spreadsheet. And I know I did check that example or my spreadsheet against that example, so I, my spreadsheet does give the correct uh, K value. Uh, 
I'm just checking it over here. You should be seeing this Excel file now. Do you see the Excel file on the screen? Sorry, do you see the Excel yes, file? Yes. Right, so you see the, the uh, on the Excel file. Uh, that's uh, if you look in the top there, you'll see the, I'm highlighting now the the formula on the top here yeah, on the screen. And you can see it's got the 10.7 uh, times the D4. So times that uh, D4 is my L. So 10.7 times L. Uh, the L has to be divided by uh, a thousand. What's it? Uh, and then I'm time I'm multiplying it by the uh, one over thousand times one point eight five two. Uh, that's for that. I told you the correction factor for the Q. Right? You know, the Q we divided by a thousand and we this thing and then we separate it and then the right hand side terms over there. So it's exactly that formula that I've given. Now let's go back. I just want to show you that if I substitute the values, the uh, let's. I just want to go back and I'll arrive at the same answer. So for example, uh, for pipe one. Uh, okay, I'm not sharing my screen. I'm just making a note of it. Uh, let me just put here like pipe one. Uh, I just want to write that down. So the diameter is uh, 0.15. For the diameter, the L is equal to 305 meters. Uh, and let me substitute that. Okay, and the C uh, C value uh, C W be working with 100. Right. So that's what's different for pipe one uh, in my spreadsheet. So let me come back here. So for the pipe diameter. For the first pipe, if I put uh, 0 0.15, so 0 0.15, right? uh, for the L, I'm now changing that to 305 meters. Right? Uh, the C value, uh, I'm not, we, in that example of that has 100, that C value is 100. And the K value now, you can see 0 0.018. Four six whatever that zero point zero one eight four six. So if I go back and check it, you can see a zero point zero one eight. Uh, it's been rounded off over here, so that's how you're getting the zero point zero one eight seven over there. Right? But uh, you can see it's almost the same value as what you have uh, from this formula over here. So I don't I don't know why you're getting a different value. I'll, I'll go over it again, sir, and I'll see if right. I'm so this, it, it may be, uh, I'm just trying to think of it, and maybe they've, uh, in that 6.02, there may be uh, some other terms that, okay, uh, yeah, actually, I'm just looking at it. If you notice the in, in this uh, third equation, I don't see the 1,000 anymore, 1,000 to that power, 1.852. Uh, so maybe that's also been lumped up. Uh, lumped up into that same value. The 6.02 might represent what I've shown in blue and might also represent uh, this particular value over there in that whole thing. Because you see, the only the, the L over 4.5, that's there, and then the Q value at the end, that's the left over there. So maybe maybe that's where... Uh, if you, uh, do, you have, do you have a few seconds, if you can try that, the answer that you got for that first one, this multiplied by 1 over 1,000 to the power 1.852 and see if you get that K value. Anybody? Uh, do you want to try that out and let's see? That's to, to, to get that value of 6.02 times 10 to the minus 9. Does it work out now? Yeah, it's okay. working, sir. I got it. It's worked. Okay. Uh, so, uh, okay. My apologies. So I, wasn't, I, I wasn't multiplying by the 1,000. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 My apologies, I just in explaining, you. You know, I, I thought the screen was shared, but I was still, uh, you're still seeing my spreadsheet. Uh, so the rest of the class may not have followed that. Right? Okay, okay, but so that is. Thank you. All right. Okay, so that's sort of that. So it's just the one query about that they have a F instead of a K uh, in that other one. And I'll reply to you with that. Uh, I'll, I'll send an email to the entire class uh, or via an email, right? I'll email it to all of you. Uh, any other queries? Anybody else? Do you have any further queries? Anybody? Uh, okay, there's no further queries. Let me stop the recording.